Hi, we certainly have an unwieldy title for our panel this morning. I think for the past four years, I have spoken every year at the Economy Hotels Conference. For the past three years, I always make it a point to stay in the Ibis Hotel. This year, somehow my secretary got her into her mind. She's surfing on Agoda, and she found a great deal at another hotel. She said, oh, stay here. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. So, of course, last night when I check in, I find out that, yes, there is a $30 charge for Wi-Fi. Yes, there is a $26 charge for breakfast. There's also an additional charge if you want to have Wi-Fi in the lobby. You have to fill out an application. So yeah, I was aspirational. I was everything else. But you know, Michael Eisenberg, sorry. Next year, I will book at the EBIS. There's nothing wrong with economy or budget hotels. They're functional and they're great products. You know, that's why I like this conference. It's really, really timely in terms of what's happening in the landscape. You know, so often for us as consultants, we go out and we talk to owners and say, what about economy hotels. And a few, get, few days ago, I was talking to some friends, I'm saying, oh, I'm going to Singapore, I'm going to the Economy Hotel Conference. And you see the eyes glaze over, and this guy's a disinterest with the people going, oh, economy hotels, that's not sexy, that's not, you know, kind of trend setting, it's kind of just a bland subject. You know, I think to a point when we're talking to hotel owners, and that's who we have here today, you know, somehow we've often been getting the same reaction, where they're kind of saying, you know, what would Clint say? It's often when you're sitting there talking to a chair and there's no response. You know, people aren't registering. Economy hotels, why are we going to start investing in economy hotels? What's sexy about that? Why is it a great investment? I think you also have to go back and when we're looking at budget hotels, you know, look at our customers. I know I come from Phuket. And we look at, I travel Air Asia a lot throughout the region. You know, I'm looking at all these great people here. And they're too nicely dressed. I've seen the EBUS video. And frankly, I think those people are staying at different EBUS because those aren't the customers. You know, when I come down, certainly from Phuket, you know, I look at travelers in my island, I'm seeing people who are really dressing down, right? You know, who are the economy travelers? I mean, let's face it. We've got to be realistic who our customers are and what they're doing here, you know? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It's coming on, and we actually want to look at our tourists as well and seeing coming friends from Australia and everybody else and saying, yeah. <laughs> well, we got a, huh. I got a quick selfie here. <laughs> so, coming from Ireland. <laughs> what I want to say here certainly is that, you know, for economy hotels, we can always say the same, same. They're also different. Yeah, there's a lot of things out there happening in the sector which are pretty exciting. I think something that we want to do is why are hotel owners actually investing in economy hotels? What's going to make them important investments? I mean, we knock over to this now. Oh, it's very interesting. Uh, this should be on the entertainment TV. Is there a Kardashian in the room? Um, actually, when I looked at this subject for our owners panel here, we're, we hatched a plan. We're going to look at a case study for a new investment in an economy hotel of all places, Phuket. So we threw it back to the owners, you know, let these guys do some work for once. Too often they're the ones on the other end questioning the management chains. Let's talk to some hotel owners. We've given them a scenario here. Right? We've got the deal, okay? We've got a piece of land in Patong, Phuket, okay? There's 47,000 hotel rooms in Patong and Phuket on the entire island. About half of these are sitting in Patong, okay? Phuket gets about 4.7 million visitors a year. It has a good occupancy, 72%, probably island-wide, right? For Patong, it's a non-seasonal market. So we talked to our owners and we're saying, what kind of product are they going to go into the market? Are they going to look at economy hotels? Are they going to do budget hotels, limited service hotels, sub-budget hotels? What kind of product? They've got a land plot, 1,000 square meters. It's off the beach, so it's not beach views. They've got a GFA of about 7,000 square meters and a 23-meter height restriction. they got a land value of about $800,000. Hotel ADRs in Phuket are quite low in terms of the lower segment. You have a lot of independent hotels. There's an IBIS there. There's also a Holiday Inn Express coming into the market, which is expected to change the rate profile. But right now, it's largely an independent marketplace. So what we want to do is throw over to our owner's panel and let them go one by one and present what were their solutions for this piece of land. Maybe starting with Rico, Rico de Blanc. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we, um, I looked at this case study, uh, and uh, although I've been to Phuket, I've never developed in Phuket. Um, I'm based in Hong Kong. We build in Hong Kong and China. 
So if I were to buy a plot of land in Patong, I would uh, clearly choose to have an international operator to be my partner and help me to develop a hotel. I would develop a room-only hotel. I'll make small rooms, um, no larger than 20 square meters. Um, I would not build any food and beverage if, if, if I don't have to. And uh, knowing Pat Tong a little bit, you can walk outside and, and get your food and beverage there. Um, I would choose for the international hotel brand because of also the distribution system they would, uh, they would give me. I would hope to uh, not having to work with too many OTAs um, because they are too high commissioned. Uh, so I, uh, like our hotels in Hong Kong, the Four Seasons or Ritz-Carlton, we, uh, we tend to only do 2 or 3% OTAs and the rest is coming directly uh, to the, into the hotel. Um, as for financing, uh, I probably would finance it ourselves. Um, but knowing our company we would only invest in Hong Kong and China, I would use this merely as a, a development opportunity and uh, sell it within three to five years, um, if that was the opportunity. If you're the hotel owner, what's your view on facilities? You know, you're going to be a long-term owner of the asset. You know, are you going to put in things like swimming pools? Are you going to put in some food and beverage? No, I, um, with the, the, the plot that you gave me, I would uh, clearly in Patong use, uh, use the beach. I would not build any pool. I would just do rooms only, and uh, I think I would do very well if I do that. Okay, excellent. Umesh? Uh, good morning. Uh, I would do about 175 keys of about 22 meters square. I would try and fit in uh, two double beds or two queen beds in each of these rooms. Uh, so it could cater to both fa family tourists as well as the uh, business traffic that is now increasingly uh, you know, showing up in Phuket for the mice traffic. I'd put in a lot of meeting space rather than food and beverage and uh, uh, other recreational areas because uh, everything else is available on that strip from what I can make out. I mean, going through the case study, there is a mall next door, uh, which would probably have uh, food and beverage facilities and shopping in plenty. And uh, again, uh, omit out what is not necessary. But uh, the, con the thrust is gonna be on a slightly larger format room, uh, given that it's both leisure and business uh, area. It's an economy hotel, internationally branded. I would choose a brand that can uh, probably bring in uh, something like Tune, though they're already there. I would probably try and convince them to do a second one there. Okay, great. Uh, maybe we talk to Anton. Anton was our most studious uh, panel today. He's prepared a presentation, actually. Here, here Anton, here's a presentation. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> so, uh, the way I look at this uh, case study basically is very uh, simple. Uh, the data, I just keep it because Bill already introduced a little bit about that. So, uh, from the owner's point of view, basically the most important thing is, uh, you know, for budget hotel, how can we have a high return with a very, uh, a very low risk for, for the property? So, based on this, uh, the goal of the owner, then, okay, we see of whether the market is support what I have uh, think about. If we see the, the market in Phuket, we see the, the, the numbers of tourist arrival in Phuket. Of course, this is a consists of the international and, and domestic tourist arrival, uh, which it's going to be reach 9.3 million uh, in at the end of the year 2012, and which is I think is slightly higher compared to Bali. And based on that, we see how how's the composition of the hotel currently available in Phuket from the big portion. From the big portion we have uh, here, it consists of the uh, two stars and three stars category. This is uh, about 65%. So this is the market we want to, to, to attack. And if we see deeply about that, only 3% of the uh, hotels in Phuket, currently available in Phuket, is international brand hotel. And uh, mostly are on the uh, three star category and above. So two-star category, we know there's basically none at the moment. We know that there's news that a uh, Chun Hotel is currently building there, but I think this is just only one or two of, of them. So there's still big opportunity to, to, to enter to this market. 
So the question now, what kind of uh, hotels, budget hotel we want to build? And I see here, uh, I want to introduce the, the concept here is uh, resort budget hotel. So if we see the resort budget hotel, so this is com consists of the three elements, basically. For budget hotels, we know this is basically we have to provide the comfortable rooms with uh, uncompromised uh, quality and, of course, uh, service and security. And for the resort, I just think that we need to provide also the swimming pool because this is located on the uh, resort area. And probably if it's possible that we can also have a small balcony which we can view to the, to the, to the beach. And uh, we also provide a spa, but we don't manage the spa by ourselves. But of course, because we have like, you know, as mentioned, 7,000 gross floor area, so we can probably allocate some of them for, 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 for leasable area. And on that area, we can put spa in. Okay, and uh, automation, we know recently the, the, the cost of the you know, uh, personal expense and also the, the utility expense is the main component expense for the, for the budget hotel. So these two uh, area uh, we need to uh, think about. Uh, one of the example, I think we can uh, reduce the number of employee by having the, you know, automation, uh, automatic check-in and also uh, for, to reduce the utility expense by having the sensor in the room, which we can, uh, it, it will notify that uh, whether there's somebody inside or not. So it, the lighting and our recordation system will uh, shut off uh, automatically. Okay, so the area here, uh, if we have seven floors, on the first two floors we allocated for the lease area, uh, which is uh, including spa inside that, and of course we have to select the um, um, tenant mix, which is appropriate and, and uh, support to the, to, the, to the budget hotels. And on top of that, uh, five floors for, for the hotels. So now we look at the figures. If we assume that the occupancy, the stabilized occupancy can reach about 80% and we can start the average daily rate by about $45, with the assume that uh, it will increase by 5% premium. So we reach the revenue about 2 million and uh, EBITDA about 1.1, 1.2 around that. And so the return on investment, if roughly calculation is about 20% and payback probably around six to 7%, uh, seven years. Okay, by saying that, I think that's it. Okay, Sunny Bajaj. Thank you. Um, Phuket, uh, great market, a lot of uh, mid-scale hotels already, uh, very few branded mid-scale hotels. Um, so definitely, um, I would brand it. We just recently opened the Holiday Inn Express, first Holiday Inn Express in the region. Uh, we like the model, a uh, very lean, very smart model. And we'd definitely do something like that again if we had the opportunity in Phuket. Although I think ISG has already uh, beat me to it and signed it with someone else. Um, uh, yes, definitely brand it to something like a Holiday Inn Express. Um, we would expect to, to do anywhere between 150 to 175 rooms, depending on room size, uh, varying from 20 to 23 square meters, depending on the land configuration and, and whatnot. Um, and of course, then we would stick core to the brand. Uh, no swimming pool, uh, one restaurant serving only breakfast, uh, called the Great Room. Um, and obviously, we'd probably have uh, some commercial space uh, on the ground level only that we'd rent out uh, as additional income for, for the project. Um, yeah, financing, we would uh, definitely source local debt. Um, normally, local debt uh, is available anywhere between uh, 60 to 70 percent. Uh, yeah, generally, DE ratios of two to one. Um, like I said, we stick core to the van again, no swimming pool, Mill. Um, we would expect opening rates uh, for something like this in the Phuket area to be in the region of around 2,000 baht, um, about $67, uh, running at first year occupancy, I, I, I would say a little aggressive, maybe around 72, 73%. Um, going up to second year, I would expect it to hit at least 2,200 baht, um, somewhere near the uh, $70 mark, maybe $73 mark, 
Um, and going beyond that, we're already hitting, at that point, I would expect uh, around 53% uh, GOPs already. And there's no reason why this model cannot hit uh, above 60% third year uh, and, uh, and on. Um, so yeah, that is, uh, in a nutshell, uh, our model. Uh, Eddie Lim. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, we, we run an uh, economy hotel in Singapore, and uh, it's mainly uh, all of our properties are in Singapore. So uh, just now I understand that uh, tomorrow there is a site tour to our hotel, Fragrance Hotel, Riverside. Uh, may I know how, how many are go are, are, are of the audience are going there? May I have a show of hand? Okay, uh, then I feel happier because uh, it's not a big group. As you know, uh, running an economy hotel, uh, like what I think uh, Rico has uh, brought up, uh, we have to keep it very simple uh, in this case study as well. A uh, lot of rooms, okay? uh, no F&B, but perhaps if there is, could be very small. So this is exactly what uh, our hotel setup is. If you, tomorrow you go there, you can see that you can only maybe see three staff, very lean manpower. Okay? And my, my, my hotel lobby, probably could not accommodate half of the uh, audience here. Okay. So in fact, when I, when I look at this case study and I, I, I refer to some of the statistics of uh, Phuket, looking at it, there's a lot of economy tier hotel and their average room rate is about 40 US and 50 US. So, and looking at our occupancy is not quite high. I mean, it's about uh, 60, 60% of uh, AOR. Okay, so uh, my thinking is that why run a budget hotel where you know you have a, a lot of the supply there and then uh, uh, with a low AOR. So, but then we are restricted to this uh, com uh, conversation of the economy hotel. So now, yeah, we, we want to run the economy hotel there. But looking at why I say why we don't run the economy hotel there in my thought is because if you look at the, the, the the, the room rate is 20 to $40 ADR, which is quite low. So now since we are, uh, conversation is about economy hotel, yes, I would think I would pick the same model, almost like a Rico, all hotel rooms. And uh, looking at that, uh, tomorrow you are going to my hotel that is about 101 rooms. My GFA, I think, is uh, probably less than half of the GFA of this case study. So it's about... Uh, maybe perhaps uh, 2,000 square meter. This case study, we have 7,000 square meter of GFA. Probably I will not run a 150 room hotel. Uh, with this type of room rate and this type of occupancy, maybe I want to run a 500 room hotel. But I don't think it's possible. If not, you will end up every room is 10 square meter. So uh, based on a realistic size of about 20 square meter, uh, or probably 18 square meter, we can build out to a most 250 rooms hotel. and. Uh, you have to keep it very simple, looking at the room rate, and uh, we have to build a very economy cost hotel, but we, I think we have to market it at a very high end of the economy hotel rate. So in terms of branding and marketing and positioning, we really have to market it as slightly higher so that we don't have to fight with the local player. We maybe have their property free. So uh, that, that's the way that we can get back the faster return in a sense, and uh, probably uh, we, we can add a swimming pool, but I don't think it's necessary. So we have to also keep the maintenance cost very, very low. So I think hotel lobby with all room is uh, my pick, and uh, which I think will yield the fastest return in this case study in particular. Thank you. I think certainly the resort markets pose an interesting uh, dilemma for brands, certainly. You know, you look at the, the beachfront markets, you're saying, are you going to have swimming pools? I'm going to pick on somebody from IHG, perhaps. So by IHG standards, of course, there's usually not a swimming pool in a Holiday Inn Express. Maybe Jennifer commenting on swimming pools or not swimming pools for Patong? Bill, good question. Um, I, I think obviously being true to the model, we, we want to stay as lean and mean as we can and, and keep our costs low and, and really focus around revenue generating space. Um, you're going to ask me directly, have we put a swimming pool in Patong? And the answer is we put in a very compact pool. We've really maximized the rooms that we have there, but this is really because we're trying to drive rate premium in that market. And we do believe that there is a customer that is really looking at a purpose-driven stay. They're there to really make the most of Patong. So it is not a massive swimming pool. It is very compact. It allows them to have a dip in the pool, but obviously we're very well located 
beachside as well. So the focus is very much on driving revenue generating space and driving the rooms product. We don't have a restaurant in there and that's just really a, something that we've looked at uh, case by case but only in resort locations where we're seen as a hub in a hub destination. Yeah, there's a lot of interesting points here. You know, certainly the point Eddie made, sometimes maybe there isn't a budget solution. Maybe it's pointless. You know, as a hotel owner, you have to evaluate. Maybe there isn't the opportunity. You know, with budget or economy hotels, there's always the, the issue of land cost and certainly going to CBD, CBD locations. Is it going to make money sense? So perhaps that's why you're seeing a lot of uh, these mixed-use projects when we look at Bangalore with the Ebus and Novotel together. You know, we're seeing people stack up budget hotels or economy hotels with commercial projects as well. So certainly, you know, land cost is an underlying issue because budget economy hotels, the history of these were roadside hotels in North America or Europe where you had cheap land. You know, the, in Asia, it's a completely different landscape, so certainly that's a big issue for owners. I think something that when we're going backwards and talking about... Uh, you know what the owners are saying in terms of uh, what type of investment, what's going to happen in terms of uh, the motivation of buying. You know, who's actually investing right now? We're seeing some institutional investors come into the sector. We're seeing other people come in and buying properties on an individual basis. But the development scenario, I know we have a group here, Santara Hotels from uh, Thailand. Certainly they're getting involved in that sector. You've got your Centra brand as well. You know, from a traditional legacy hotel group, which has been really positioned in larger hotels, how do you see yourself shifting into to the budget and economy sector? Yes. Uh uh, a year ago, we opened the, uh, the uh, value proposition hotels called Centra in, in Phuket. Okay, um, the room size is about 22 square meters. Uh, this hotel, you know, when we opened up, is become one of the most successful hotels we opened in, 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 in Thailand. The first year, you know, we do 70% right away of the room rate, about 2,400. You know, Phuket, you know, they have a low season, okay? Um, you know, the low season in Phuket, especially in, in Patong area, um, the price of the ADR is, can be really, really fluctuated. You know, sometimes, you know, between 1,000 baht to high season about 3,000 baht, something like that, okay? Um, swimming pool is a must, okay? Because you're gonna make uh, your guests to stay in the hotels longer the length of stay can be from a couple of days to be a couple of weeks, you know, if you have the swimming pool. Okay, um, I think that's about it in Phuket, yes. Maybe taking a broader view, taking our panelist view, maybe um, a panelist by panelist, why is your group investing in this sector, starting with Rico? Because it's a great model. We have uh, um, some great partners like IHG, uh, a few years ago, we bought the Holiday Inn Express in, in Hong Kong, which uh, has just under 300 rooms. We, uh, we run a 94% occupancy. The average rate is just shy of 200 US dollars um, and a GOP percentage of 67%. This hotel is uh, extremely successful in the location that it's in. Subsequently, this month, we're opening uh, with them another Holiday Inn Express, um, which uh, is slightly bigger, 350 rooms. Um, in a different location, but still, uh, I think their distribution channel and the way they do business, um, I clearly would like to invest more in that. So we do have luxury hotels um, in Hong Kong and China and Japan, but the economy hotels shows also a great return. This, this Holiday Inn Express, for example, gives us eight US dollars per square foot per month EBITDA. Our Four Seasons gives us $11. You can imagine how much more it costs to build the Four Seasons than cost to build the Holiday Inn Express. Now, the, the Four Seasons, of course, is part of the mixed-use development of IFC, so it adds value to the mixed-use, and that's why we chose for Four Seasons at an additional cost, but the return clearly is um, very profitable for us. Um, <clears throat> for us, it's a conscientious decision to go in for this category of hotel because it's uh, actually a format which is less lethargic, actually very active, as compared to a luxury class hotel, which takes a longer gestation period. Uh, today, people are looking at freshness, so you can turn around this hotel's uh, you know, renovation in about three to four years' time. The materials are such that their qualities have improved. Uh, they're not too expensive. You still can uh, you know, budget off a major renovation 
within a three to four year cycle. Uh, and that keeps on uh, keeping the product peppy. It uh, works on a lesser manpower format as compared to you know, the original one is to one uh, ratios or more. And I think uh, you know, you're just taking off the fat. I think in these times when lean and mean is in, uh, you don't really need uh, a, a, a product that uh, drags on you. And uh, from an investment perspective, uh, I think it's fabulous because you're able to make the best use of uh, smaller parcels of land, and in, especially in Asia, where real estate cost is very, very heavy. Um, India being one of the highest also. And uh, you know, that makes the economics of an economy hotel uh, very, very viable, if at all. Uh, there is a choice, it's gonna be an economy hotel. So uh, I think the model is very interesting because uh, this is just based on the, uh, what we experience in our company. Uh, in our company, we have seven hotels. Uh, two of them are budget hotel. If you know, uh, I don't know how many of you have you been uh, to the uh, Formula One in Jakarta. We have one in Menteng area and one in uh, Chikini area. And uh, of course, we compare to the five-star hotel we have in Bali, like Grand Hyatt, Bali Hyatt, and Hyatt Regency Jogja and also for four-star hotel, Mercury Resort Sanur and uh, Mercury Convention Center in Jakarta. Uh, in terms of the margin, of course, budget hotel is generate much more compared to, 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 to in terms of the margin. So uh, the investment is also very low. We are talking about, you know, four million to five million uh, US dollars. And with a very uh, quick payback period, I think this is a very great uh, investment. And from the market point of view, uh, the current development, uh, which is you know with the low cost carrier, people traveling around from one city to another city, I think this is just a big opportunity uh, for the hoteliers to, to, to get into that. Okay, Sunny, let's put you on the spot. You own a W, you own a Sheraton, you own a Holiday Inn Express. Any favorites? Um, yeah, actually, I was just about to say that this is our first foray into into the limited service, uh, and, and same as these gentlemen were just saying, I think the returns are are potentially uh, amazing, and then investment costs a lot less, much faster, much easier to build. Um, so definitely a model that we like, and we'd love to do more of. Um, you know, with with markets changing so much, especially in our region, uh, we we don't. Uh, Thailand being a, um, a, a destination where we used to depend on a lot of Europeans in our high season and whatnot, it's changed so much. Um, and we all are concentrating on uh, regional business. Um, and I, I personally feel this model, not that there's no money in the market, I still believe there's still a lot of money in the market for high-end hotels, but um, the changing demographics really, uh, I think, increases the demand for a uh, limited service or an economy hotel. Um, you know, with also the free trade opening up in 2015, uh, you know, there's, there's still a lot of uncertainties about what's gonna happen. Uh, we already have scarce labor, hard to find labor, so a model like this, which is very lean, we outsource everything, literally have, for a 300 room hotel in our uh, Bangkok Holiday Inn Express, we have 28 staff, okay, maybe today it's about 30, but 30 permanent staff, the rest is all outsourced. Um, you know, this is much more manageable, especially for a country like Thailand who's seen its uh, fair share of volatility. Uh, we're much, um, uh, what do you call, uh, better fit to, to manage any issues that do come about if they do, hopefully not. We're all hoping for one, one free year of any, uh, any issues. So, Alan, please help me keep the floods away. Um, yeah, so ab absolutely, this is a model that we like, and we'd definitely like to, to expand it with, you know, online, uh, the, everyone's touched on online business. Um, we're, we're seeing a fair share, up to about 50% or so, of online business coming through our, our networks. Uh, actually, all of it coming through the brand's, um, uh, what do you call it, website which actually surprised us and, and actually very pleasantly. Like Rico said, we'd like to keep uh, uh, OTAs at a minimum, but um, a, play, a country like Thailand, or, or at least Bangkok, where there's so much uh, supply, um, where and, you know, OTAs have been like um, uh, heroin for some people and they're addicted to it, paying up to 40% in commissions, which is uh, 
highway robbery, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so yeah, uh, I wish it could be two, three percent. Um, yeah, I definitely, we'd like to concentrate on this uh, this model more, and we'd love to do more, if not only in Thailand. Great, Eddie. Yeah, I think uh, most of it has been covered by the panel here, but I think just to highlight one point on economy tier hotel is that uh, uh, we experienced that uh, for the two downturns. Uh, what first is the 2003 South and the other one is the 2009 uh, global economic crisis, where we see that this sector, uh, which we operate in, uh, usually uh, I would say that uh, more resilient to any economic downturn. Yes, there will be a drop in terms of ADR or ARR, but then if you compare to other tier, you can see that the drop is uh, 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 lesser uh, uh, based on our uh, uh, so-called experience here in 2009. I think in general hotel in Singapore, there's about a drop of uh, 20 to 30 percent in terms of their repel. But for us, there's uh, about 10 to 20 percent. So I think in this segment, yeah, we are less resilient to any economic uh, downturn. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we've, all, we've heard a lot of the brand talk, but maybe to talk about the independence. When you have uh, smaller regional companies and people trying to attract uh, uh, hotel owners to sign with their brand, and I've got Mark uh, from Talzio who has his pop brand. When you're trying to attract hotel groups to whatever, hotel owners to develop a pop hotel, what's your pitch against the big international brands? Thank you. No, I think first the, on the Economic and budget segment is rely a lot on domestic uh, markets. So to have an international network has less impact. The very important to have a network within the country. Uh, then it's the best way to grape the domestic market. I think that's one capital advantage. Uh, so there's very focus by 80%, 90% on domestic market, except so maybe like destination Bali, Phuket, which is more international. But nevertheless, the key factor on this segment is the domestic market. That is the capital advantage to have a strong network locally. Thank you. I guess we have another one here with Gavin Fall from uh, Swiss Bell Hotels, who has about what, 70, 80 hotels now? Oh, 100 hotels. How are you competing against the big brands in terms of the economy sector? Well, we're, we're just being forced into it. We set up a new brand called Zest six months ago, nine months ago. We now have 15 contracts. Um, we can't even answer the phone calls, Bill. There's so much demand out there, and of course it's a whole new business when you think about what's coming out of China and, and the, moving, the moving populations. But um, there's plenty of room for all of us. Um, we're all competitors, but you know, there's a ton of space out there, and if you get your product right and get your location right, you can't lose. I guess that's a good question for our panelists as well. You know, you're, you're investing in an asset, you want some safety, security. Are you going to brand the asset or not brand the asset? Maybe starting with Rico. As you know, we have uh, hotels that we operate and manage ourselves and we own ourselves. Um, those are named under the Royal brand and they've been in Hong Kong for 25 years. And those hotels are doing very well. Um, so we have a mixture of both partner hotels and own hotels. Currently, I am. Um, I think we just got two plots of land where I'm going to develop two different hotels. One of them is in a first class location. I probably fit in 888 rooms. Uh, and again, 20 square meters, very little food and beverage. Um, uh, if this microphone comes back on, I'm thinking of myself. Is it working? So this, this one I could manage easily myself um, and then uh, build my own brand. The, the other plot, the same. Um, I might have, have the same formula. Um, it's not attached to a mall, but it's uh, in a great shopping, in a great, um, shopping street. Uh, so again, Hong Kong, I don't think I'll go wrong there. If this goes well, I could even brand that further. But we're not a hotel company. We're a property developer that just happens to have hotels, and uh, I manage those 18 hotels for them. Much branding or not branding? Uh, f for a large property, um, greater than 100 rooms, I would go for branding. Uh, again, as a development company, we have uh, come up with a situation where we acquired a management company to look at smaller hotels which are more regionally focused, especially in a place like India, where you get a lot of uh, sub-100 room hotels. It's easier to create your own brand and, uh, you know, and your own management company. 
and even look at acquisition of those assets uh, on a long-term basis. But uh, if it is a greater than 100 rooms, it's always good to have a brand supporting you. Yeah, for our yes. for our company, first when we just want to start our budget hotel, we are thinking of having our own brand basically at that time. Uh, but after everything, so many uh, things, uh, and then we come up, then we, we just use the what existing international brand we already uh, already have in the market. So we use uh, Formula One at that time to hotels. And as I, for, I forgot to mention that we are going to build another two budget hotel also, one in uh, Jakarta in Kemang area and one in Yogyakarta, and later on will be in Semarang. And we are going to use pop hotels, Pamak, Pak Christoph. So uh, rather than we have to build our own brand and we have to you know find people and have to deal with the operation things, I think why don't just use whatever already in the market? I think this would be. Um, I'd brand it, um, and uh, yeah, definitely brand it. Um, there's always uh, advantages uh, to to um, branding it. Uh, we feel at least um, brand recognition, such as the Holiday Inn name, uh, for us at least uh, uh, has a lot of value. Um, distribution system, I think, uh, also a very strong point. Um, as I, I just mentioned a little while ago, uh, you know, the, the brand delivery through their own website for us is over 50%. Um, so that comes at a, at a value for us, definitely. Um, I also feel if uh, the brand's investing in, in services, uh, shared services, back office services, which, uh, which our Express does, um, it, we are also having an opportunity to, to, um, um, to save additional um, costs. Um, again, and we like the, the lean model uh, and whatnot. And I think there, there's an opportunity later on um, if, uh, you know, to, to franchise it rather than to manage it. Um, you know, hence uh, improving our bottom line a little bit further. Um, and I think um, maybe that's the way to go forward. We have a couple more um, and, and just start franchising it rather than managing it. Um, makes more sense for us. You see, we, we, we are... Uh, property owner at the same time we operate our own properties so I I, I think that uh, it, it very much boils down to whether which way will make you uh, got a more returns in the sense because in the economy here I would think that uh, uh, maybe people may not be that brand cautious it may be like a uh, more price sensitive so if as the owner if I think uh, to, to get a brand hotel in to run for us giving us a more return then obviously I think uh, we can let it uh, run but then uh, if they can't we, we are flexible that we can do it and if we really want to do it definitely you have to brand the hotel so for us is that uh, I think we, we, we take it as a very flexible way in uh, looking at the returns is more important Robert McIntosh what was the last budget or economy hotel you stayed in Tony Ryan, have you ever stayed in an economy hotel? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to wrap up into one final question here in terms of talking about the landscape going forward for, for the economy hotel sector. You know, as hotel owners, really, when we're looking about, uh, let's go back, uh, oops, okay. When we're going backwards, we're talking about what the future is, why, why you guys are investing, and for hotel investors, are they going to be looking at IPOs? Are they going to be looking at merger and acquisition? Are they going to be looking at REITs? How are they going to expand economy hotels, the sector? So what's going to be happening within that landscape? You know, Rico, for your group, how, are you, how do you see an end game for your economy hotel developments? No, there's no end game. We uh, built a portfolio. We have no interest to, uh, to exit. Um, all the hotels are uh, for a reason there. Um, again, we're not a hotel company. We, we don't want to grow... Uh, the hotels into a, a hotel company, but uh, similar to host, but on a smaller scale, we uh, we, we add uh, to the portfolio, and, and I and my team manage that portfolio. Uh, my company also has a similar agenda. We're going to hold because uh, the company itself is funded by investors. If they want to exit, that's their problem. But as a company ourselves, we are going to hold on to the assets. Well, my company will also will hold it. Uh, I think in order to, for example, uh, to go it uh, on public, I think you have to have at least 50 budget hotels in your portfolio in order to do that. So other, other than that, I think that's not worth it enough. 
Um, we're a small company, very flexible. We can hold, sell, JV. Um, interestingly enough, if we have a, a, a decent portfolio put together, um, REITs are being introduced in Thailand uh, end of this year, beginning of next year. That might be an opportunity for us to, um, to, to exit a portion of our, our holdings as well. Uh, same as uh, Sunny, we are also flexible. I think we have a, a total of 23 hotels and we started 1998. Uh, so uh, part of our hotel we have been holding until now since uh, 1997 when we acquired the land. So, but then we, uh, on the way, I think we also have uh, sold some of our hotels uh, uh, where you can uh, yield a pretty high uh, capital gain. So we are flexible about it. Thank you. You know, I think moving through the, through the panels, is there anybody here from Accor? Ah, Victor Pang. There's something that bothers me, Ibis or Ibis? Oh, we've got about five more minutes. Do we have any questions for our panelists here? We've got a lot of expertise up here. Do we have anybody out in the audience? I know we've heard enough from me, certainly, so. Okay, maybe let's talk to some of our panelists. Great, great locations, great markets for uh, economy and budget hotels. Rico. <laughs> he didn't need the microphones. <laughs> it's the obvious. I'm going to focus on India. This large enough market out there? For me, it must be Indonesia. <laughs> <laughs> Bangkok needs more rooms. <laughs> Same for Singapore. <laughs> right. Anyway, I'd like to thank our panels today. They've been uh, given us some great insight and certainly enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you so much.